What is up everyone? Darkside Phil here and welcome to the first episode of a new series that I am starting called Gaming on the Go. And this series is going to be dedicated to looking at games that you can actually get off of iTunes for your iPad and or in some cases for your iPhone. Or some, and also some iPods also uh, work with them. In the past several years we've seen gaming really jump to new heights on mobile devices, okay? And some some of these games, like, remember, Angry Birds are, are huge. They make so much money, and there's it's a just cash cows. But it's funny because when you actually go to look at, say, a review of Angry Birds, you never actually see a real gamer doing this kind of review. You might see someone for a tech magazine type something up, or you might see someone who you know is like a writer or an editor, they're not gamers. And so my goal with this series is to be showing you what gaming has become on mobile devices, hopefully show you some games that are pretty good and show you why it has blown up, but how it is different from mainstream gaming, and, uh, and to basically let you know whether or not you should check out some of these games. Now, as you can see here, I actually have several games on my iPad, and I apologize because as you can tell, this is going to be guerrilla style. There's no easy way to actually film an iPad, okay? There's no perfect lighting. There's nothing that can really be done. So right now I just have it set down on my coffee table and I have my camera running. So the game we're going to talk about today in the very first episode of Gaming On The Go is a game that actually originally I was going to get for the Nintendo 3DS earlier in the year, but I ended up getting backed up. I had too many games on my handhelds that I, I wasn't getting a chance to play as it was, and I said I didn't need another one. Well... To my surprise, after I purchased my iPad in December, I actually found out this game actually does exist on the iPad, and I had no idea. And the game that I'm talking about is... Well, no, it's not Final Fantasy's 25th anniversary. It's Theatrhythm Final Fantasy, as you're about to see. Okay, so what is Theatrhythm Final Fantasy? Well, this is a music game using music and songs from all of the Final Fantasy games and actually turning it into a touchscreen experience. I'm actually going to lower the volume a little bit because it was on max there. Whoops. Let's go to about three quarters volume. So as you can hear right now, right now there's, there's Final Fantasy music playing. So to show you how this game works, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and I'm going to demo the game and show you the two different types of songs that actually are present in this game. So what you would do is you actually go into music stages. Okay. Now, just to clarify, when you get this game, because it is for free on the App Store, you only get three songs. That's it. Only three songs to play for free. Every other song that you want to play, you have to purchase. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later on in the, the video. But what I want to show you here is that Basically, there are two different kinds of songs present in Theatrhythm Final Fantasy. There are FMS and BMS stages. So FMS are basically kind of the overworld themes or the more general... Wow, this song is really picking it up a notch, isn't it? Let me lower it a little bit more so that we can... <laughs> we can not be distracted. It's the more overworld themes of the Final Fantasy series. So, for example, the overworld theme for Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy VII, all those are there. But the battle themes are a simulation of a Final Fantasy battle where you pick four characters and you're going to go up against monsters and stuff. Here it is. Okay, and as you can see, you've got basic score, expert score, and ultimate score that represent three difficulty ratings for the song, but then you have these harder versions of the song that you can unlock, like I said, as you play through the game and you get bonuses for performing well. So let's do a quick demo of how this works. For this, since I'm playing it sideways, obviously, I'll do basic score. Now, what happens is every time that you go to play a song, you actually get to pick a party. That's right, you actually have four characters from the Final Fantasy universe that you have the ability to pick. And as you can see here, it's ones from all different Final Fantasies. You've got Terra from Final Fantasy VI. You've got <clears throat> Butts from Final Fantasy V. Look at that. Uh, Cecil from Final Fantasy IV. If you go further up, there's Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I forget what the fuck his name was from Final Fantasy VIII because I hated that game. 
Same thing with Final Fantasy IX. I never played it, but him. You got Titus from Final Fantasy X. You've actually got one of those weird-looking fucking creatures from Final Fantasy XI. That weird-ass MMORPG. Um, Vaughn. You've got Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. So you actually have a character from every single Final Fantasy game is selectable. And there's actually more characters that you can buy for, a, I believe it's a couple bucks each. Either a dollar or a couple bucks each. Uh, later on, if you want to, you can buy it off the, the store. So... What you do is you pick a party of four people. So just to show you, I had Cloud selected. Get that, get out of there. Let's go back to Cloud. And each character actually has unique abilities during the song. So if you screw up, one character might cast a, 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 a spell and it might take back the fact that you made that mistake. So let's go ahead and we're going to play this song to give you an example of an FMS song. What I just did there is because I did a, a combo streak during a certain period of time. It actually changed my character out to a chocobo who now advances the song a little bit faster, but also gives you bonus points if you get a perfect streak during it. Oh, I did bad on that one. And usually I am much better, it's just that I'm playing this sideways. <laughs> and there we are. That's the end of the song. Oh, and we actually ran into a Moogle at the end of it, which is pretty cool. So that's an example of an FMS song. It, was a, 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 it wasn't too crazy. It wasn't like out of control. It was a pretty calm song. You know, it usually has down, you press and hold a lot. And you only play as one character at a time, just like in Final Fantasy. When you're traversing the overworld of any Final Fantasy game, you're only playing as one character at a time. All right, look. Looks like a standard Final Fantasy battle screen. You have your, your characters lined up. On the right-hand side of the screen, attacking the enemies on the left-hand side. And as you can see, what's happening is the notes, instead of staying in one place, are actually moving all over the screen. And that signifies the turn of the person who you're actually tapping. And as you see, they're actually hitting this, this Final, Final Fantasy enemy and injuring him. What happens is if you complete the sequence, you have a summoned monster. So we just summoned a monster from the Final Fantasy series to actually attack this enemy. And as you can see, it is. It's actually using special elemental abilities to kill this enemy. And one actually already died. And now it's going to do Diamond Dust. So that's actually Shiva from the Final Fantasy series, Simon Diamond Dust, and killed that monster. There you go. So, the bottom line is... It's, the game at first may be a little difficult until you get adjusted to the songs. If you actually are a fan of Final Fantasy music, it, the game's a hell of a lot easier, because if you recognize the song, you're probably going to tap to the beat of the song that you already know, and it makes it a hell of a lot easier. Options, I'll show you. What this is, is a series of marathons, basically. It's almost like you're going out on a campaign to t tackle these songs. And so if you do a five quest short quest, what that means is you're going to have five sets of two songs, starting with the FMS song and then a BMS song. And each set will give you different perks. So let me show you what I mean. So, I show I've actually done this before, but let's select. Okay? And when you start these quests, what happens is it gives you selection. So what they're saying right here is that this is only one star difficulty, this is two, and this is three. So depending on what you pick, one will be easier, three will be much harder. Okay? For the, for the sake of argument, let's do two. Level two difficulty. And what they're showing you now is that if you complete this quest successfully, you will actually get a collect -a card And a collect -a card is a collectible, which I'll go back now and I'll show you what those are. It's a collectible that you actually have a collection of cards that show all the Final Fantasy characters from the history of the Final Fantasy universe here on the main menu. So just to show you my collection, over the time that I've been playing this game, some of the cards that I've accumulated, look at this. We've got different characters. Who's this? Let's go back to the, to the, the beginning here. That was the end. You've got characters from the Final Fantasy universe. Look, you've got Cecil there. You've got Cloud. We've actually got there Snow from Final Fantasy XIII, Kane from Final Fantasy IV, Lightning, Sephiroth right there. And then you start to have summoned monsters, and then you also have other monsters. Look, the Black Knight boss from one of the Final Fantasy games. I can't read what that. Oh, Scarmiglione. He's from uh, Final Fantasy IV. He's one of the elemental fiend bosses. You may also get 
healing bonuses. And what I mean by that is if you're playing the song and you're missing notes, you're losing HP. And obviously if you're doing a marathon campaign, not just song by song, there's a higher chance that you may run out of energy because maybe after three songs you got hit enough that you almost have no life left. Well, some of these campaigns will actually give you bonus uh, health back at the end of the completion of the campaign. Okay? We'll actually go to status here. See? So as you can see, Vaughn, he has two, uh, two abilities right now. His proactive is Fortune's Refrain. This is active for the entire length of the stage, slightly increases the luck of all party members. And then there's Reactive Mimic, activated by receiving good or better 125 times. Mimics the effects of the last reactive ability used. And there's people that have different, completely different abilities. Look, here's um, Cloud, has Weapon Break, activated when a boss monster appears in a BMS, so in a battle song. Greatly reduces the monster's attack power. Ink picks completely random songs based out of the songs that you have unlocked and able to play. Okay, So right now it picked Crystal Cave Expert Score version of Crystal Cave from Final Fantasy 3 because I picked a medium difficulty. So this is a medium difficulty song according to the game. Oops. So you can definitely see that this is a lot more difficult. It's more fast paced than the other songs that I did. It has a lot more notes and you obviously can recognize the music is a lot different because it's 8-bit music from a Nintendo game. Here, Final Fantasy IX, I never played, so I didn't buy the music from it. But you can see you can get the music bundle, which includes four songs for $3. So a little bit less than a dollar a song. If you want to buy songs individually, there are songs available for individual purchase, but they all cost a dollar each, as you can see here. Look, you've got songs from the original Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy II, Final Fantasy III... Final Fantasy 4, these I already purchased actually, because these are my favorite Final Fantasy, so I got them all. But each one was separate from the bundles that you can buy, and they cost a dollar each. Here's the problem though. Really, when you get this game, you only have three songs. So obviously, you're going to want to buy a couple bundles. You might want to buy a couple individual songs. You're going to end up basically spending anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks just to get a decent amount of songs that you can play in the game and compared to other games on the app store that's insane the app store typically games cost anywhere from a dollar to maybe the most i've seen is 10 but this game actually nickel and dimes you for every single song and you end up paying a massive amount of money in fact for all the songs that i purchased i didn't even realize it but i think i spent over 40 bucks on this game sounds great on the ipad i mean i've been using the ipad speakers the whole time for this video and it looked great but my one major complaint is the cost it's just so expensive of a game when all these other games on the ipad are a couple bucks this one is literally if you want a decent library of songs you're going to be pocket you know pocketing at least twenty dollars you're going to be spending if not more like i said i ended up spending something like 40 bucks in order to get a good library of songs so for my first gaming on the go video let's wrap it up and i'm going to say that Final Fantasy Theatrhythm is a fun and interesting game, but it's just too expensive of a game right now. Unless you're really a, a diehard, hardcore fan of Final Fantasy and its music, you're probably not going to want to spend this kind of money. Especially when, if you have a Nintendo 3DS, this game is already available on it, probably at a much discounted rate, and you get most of the songs already that you have to purchase individually if you get this game on the iPad. So... Weighing it on a scale, I, I'm actually going to do these these videos on a scale of 1 to 5. So 1 star being the worst, 5 star being a, a great, amazing experience. I'm actually going to give Final Fantasy 3 a Trithum a 3.5. I think the game itself is fun. I think that the, the music is classic and great and you get to pick and choose which tracks are your favorites from the Final Fantasy universe and play them. And I definitely like the quest medley, I like the collectibles, I like the fact that the characters level up and that there's different kinds of songs between the FMS and the BMS, but it's too damn expensive. Right now the thing is just too expensive of a game when you can go off and buy probably 10 games for the cost of this game and have all those on your iPad. So it's a great game if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, get it, but understand you're going to be spending a lot of money. All right. So that's it for the first episode of Gaming On The Go. I hope you found it informative. Now that you know a little bit more about Final Fantasy Theatrhythm. And uh, I will see you next time with another gaming app.